Rosa Sila Braske Bala, Barato Sika Mena Handos Kevinate, Bela Kayito Pase Sila Brane Sila, Mendos Kapakria Tozazi, Abana Sombres Kevila Tesena Kaite Kavela, Zunda Bita Kabala, Mentos Semena. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my viewers, for joining this broadcast. The Lord bless you mightily in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that today you will speak to us by yourself. Let your word come swiftly. Let it come with accuracy. Let it come with audience. Let it come with understanding. Let our lives be positioned to be able to comprehend what you are saying and to use it, Lord, to bring changes that require divine changes in the territory. Do it and take all the praise in the name of Jesus. I thank you for joining this um, broadcast. I am Reverend Sorochi and I want to thank you for joining this broadcast. The Lord bless you mightily. Today I mm -hmm. said that um, I was going to bring perspective to the city of Uwari as we continue a series on understanding the territory. And um, I want to make the video as brief as possible. And I pray that if you are a minister, a watchman or an intercessor in the land of Uwari, that the Lord will give you a hearing ear to understand what he said and um, what the times will be like as we move on within this year and the next. Majority of this thing, the Lord will begin to fulfill them in less than one year. So we have to be prayerful, we have to be sensitive, we have to be found in his presence. Now every city, what I want to start with is that every city has a physical dimension and a spiritual dimension. The physical dimension is what you come in contact with every day, the people you meet, the social life. But the spiritual dimension is that part of the territory that you do not see. That part of the territory that forms uh, 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 what controls the natural. That's, um, that's the spiritual dimension. And every city has a spiritual dimension. So you must be able to have the barometer, the testing equipment to be able to know the spiritual temperature of the, of the territory that you are in. Now I want to concentrate on Oweri because we have to move and move fast. Now, for those who have been in Oweri and who have labored in ministry for a long time, you will understand that Oweri is known for a strong religious spirit control. It's in the foundations. And this religious spirit control has hampered growth in the body of Christ. So if you're a minister in Oweri and you are struggling, and it's as if there is no growth. I will tell you that part of the things that um, the land holds is what we call a religious spirit. And religious spirit hampers spiritual growth in the church. The numbers might come, but they will not be able to understand uh, 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 the ways of Christ and to grow and become instruments and statues in the hand of God. That's one. Number two, it has a strong manifestation of a cultural spirit. As a cultural infiltration in the church, the culture has found a way to infiltrate the church. And this you can see, if you doubt it, it it's evident in the divisions we see in the churches in Oweri, personal ambitions and competition amongst ministers. There's a strong competition among ministers, you know, um, attack from one another, uh, backbiting and all manner of things, it is because of an infiltration of the cultural spirit into the body of Christ. Also, there's a strong manifestation of the spirit of Babylon. We know what Babylon is. And this has featured in immorality, occultism, and worldliness. And this is made more easy by the numerous um, schools and campuses in the city. And also in the increasing hoteling business that you see, it is a manifestation of the spirit of Babylon. And it manifests in immorality. Note this, immorality, occultism, and worldliness. If you see these three things there, you cannot exempt the spirit of Babylon. We see it in the land. So there is too much hoteling. And this hoteling has, has um, latched onto the spirit to be able to reach out its grip through the many campuses that we have in the land. Uh, this impact is so strong and many strong ministers have been wounded, especially in the line of immorality. They have been wounded, they have been infected 
and many strong men have been retired with the venom of this snake. I saw ministers who have been influenced and broken down. These are strong men, strong men, but they have been wounded. That's what you have when the spirit is in view. So it means that as a minister, you have a battle in your hand. And that is to be able to stand above this influence, to be able to uh, gain breakthrough and traction. So it, it, it's venom has caught a lot of ministers. Immorality is on the rampage. A lot of people have been caught by this trap. And the strange woman is in the heart. So my advice to you this today is do not be caught. I have, I have engaged this spirit in the place of prayer. And that spirit is strong and it's very violent and aggressive. So you have to take a stand and be very, very prayerful. I want to tell you also that the, that the, that the, that the sphere of Oweri is ruled by a strong principality. The area of Oweri and is a strong female spirit. A female snake principality is ruling the, the land. And, and you must understand that those are the same offshoots of Babylon. The same offshoot of immorality spirit. There's a strong seat of occultism in the land and it operates both in government circles, in business cadres, and on campuses. A strong wave of, of um, occultism. But despite all these setbacks, the people are known to be hungry for revival and, and, and God's move, but they have been overly deceived by fake prophets, charlatans, masquerading as ministers of God. They are hungry actually for God, but a lot of deception is in the land and people who claim that they are something are really not that. So there's a lot of deception in the land. Another thing I want to say about Oweri is Oweri likes ready-made structure. People normally follow leaders. If, if you are not strong, whether in good or evil, regardless of your source of authority in Oweri, they will abandon you and cluster and find cluster and solace somewhere else. So that's why a lot of people, they, they, they go diabolic. Because in a way, if you are not strong, either spiritually or strong in the evil, the people will leave you and go elsewhere. So many people who cannot command spiritual authority from the eyes of the kingdom and from the eyes of God, they go diabolical. And that's actually what's happening. It's still increasing in intense. A lot of young men had seen that route as if that's the correct route of doing ministry. But it is not. It's an abomination and heaven is completely and totally against it. Now, I want to go into my spiritual take. Now, my spiritual take is that the things that in the place of prayer, God spoke to me. They came by, by a deep knowings. They came by his revelation to me about the city that I'm laboring in. Number one, I want you to take note of these words and uh, use them in the place of prayer. Emo state and Oweri will be the center of God's move in the east. And will play a crucial role in the coming revival in the nation. I know you might not believe me, it might not seem like it, but I tell you by the word of God that Oweri will be the center of revival that is springing up in the east. So that's one. Number two, God told me that He's not. He said, I am not in your approvals. I have not honored what men that you have honored. Be careful of the accolades of men. What you honor, God said, is not in the honor that we are giving one another and those things are what young men and young ministers are after god said i am not in your approval so for you to succeed and break through in a way you must seek the honor that comes from god alone number three god said he will invest his power and reveal himself in the secret place to faithful intercessors and ministers so are you a faithful minister a faithful intercessor as long as you stay in your position god said he will invest his power he will reveal himself strongly and he will show himself faithful to you so keep standing and don't give up number four he said i will raise accurate young ministers in the land i will raise accurate young ministers in the land are you a young minister and you love god and you have been uh, 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 um, yielding to his to his wounds, yielding to his calling, and you know your call. God said he will raise accurate young ministers in the land. But one thing that God also said is that charlatans will also increase because they are powered by the blood covenant. Now, if there, are, if there is a spread of charlatans in the land, which there is, and the reason why they will still 
be, be relevant is because of the blood covenant. There are blood covenants in the land that needs to be dealt with. If we deal with the blood covenants, the, the power and the throne and the altars that back up these charlatans will be destroyed and their effect and influence will be lifted. So your young minister be strong and um, for the, the church, the praying church in Owere will rise up and we deal with the blood covenant that is sustaining the altar of charlatans and they will be destroyed. So we have to deal with the blood altars in the land to perpetually drive them out. Number five, God said, I will judge occultism, witchcraft and immorality in the church. Judgment is coming to the church in the world. Judgment is coming. Ministers who are meddling into immorality, meddling into witchcraft, meddling into occultism, God said judgment is coming. Because he said that my church will be purged and cleansed. Especially ministers who have aligned themselves with the high places. God is bringing judgment. I pray today that if you find any of these uh, uh, things attached to you, your ministry, repent today and give them up because judgment is coming. Number six, God said that fathers who have not repented to honor me will be called home. And all these things will start in less than a year. The signs will be fulfilled. Fathers in the land who have not repented, who have not honored me, they will be called home. And in the place of prayer, there is a minister in Oweri. I don't know how long he has been in Oweri, but God kept mentioning the name. The name of the minister is Reverend Ngozi. Now, when I heard the, 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 the name, I thought it was a female. But God was saying that it was a man. He has been in Oweri for a while. Um, I don't know whether that is the full name, but it's Ngozi. Ngozi may be the first name or the surname, but there's an Ngozi that is in the land. Um, God said there's a specific minister named Ngozi, Reverend Ngozi, that his carelessness brought judgment on him in the year 2008 to 9. And from 2015, it has been what it is. It's as if the judgment was, uh, uh, he was trying to rise above the judgment, but there were limitations. He said, I shall announce to you that mercy is stronger than judgment. That if you can return fully to him, that his original status to you as an apostle in the city will be restored. And the healing ministry that you have will be enlarged. The challenge you have that has reflected from 2008, 2009 to 2015, and somehow from 2015 till now, is as if there was a, there's a downward, there's a downward trend. The Lord said, "Mercy is stronger than judgment. Only if you can come back." Then He said that your true stature as an apostle in the land will be restored, and your healing ministry and gifts will be enlarged. Number eight, in less than a year, He said He will start fulfilling this sign. So watch out. In the place of prayer, in observations, watch out. Number nine, he said, watch out for politically motivated religious unrest and confusion. Pray for the soul of the heart of the government. The judgment of blood will not be lifted on the seat of government until atonement is made by the church. This is regarding the political sphere. Now, what is my advice to ministers in Oweri? Number one, God's work must be done God's way. Don't corrupt yourself or cut corners in trying to do God's work. You must be patient. You must be diligent. You must be committed. God's work must be done God's way. Number two, resist. Raise the cry and call for prayers in your own circle. Operate seriously by the Spirit, not on trends and guesswork. Raise the call of prayer in your circle, in your church. Bring them together. Pray regularly with them. Let them have series of prayers. Do not pray. Uh, do not pray carnally. Or pray seriously by the Spirit. Don't follow trends. Forget trends. Forget the carnal trends you see. Most of them are sponsored by the kingdom of darkness. Let God give you the blueprint to be able to run ministry in the heart of a world. And don't do guesswork. Number three, labor on ground to raise men. Invest in capacity building. We need to raise people that will outlive what God is doing now. It's not. It doesn't seem like it's in the picture. So we really need to raise men. Number four, be sincere, be honorable, be disciplined to the court, to yourself, and submission to God, especially in finances and immorality. 
be very sincere and honorable and disciplined. Finances, immorality, they are no no. They can kill your ministry, they can weaken your your hold, they can weaken your stand. You don't need that. Number five, obsession to the miraculous is a snare. Obsession to the miraculous. If you want to push yourself and every day you think that that's the only way to make your church grow and that's what is occupying you, you are likely going to walk into a trap. Obsession to the miraculous is a snare. Grow by the word. Lead by the word and live by the word. That's where the encounter and impartation of God is. Number six, be spiritually sensitive and alert always. The Bible says we should watch and pray. It is key. Don't live casual. Be very sensitive around you, what you do in your homes, with your children. Be sensitive. And number seven, find an accurate mentor and submit yourself. Submit yourself and submit your work and be accountable. From that point, God can be able to find help for you. In the name of Jesus. This is the word I bring for ministers in a worry. Take these words to heart. Pray about it. Pray for yourself. Pray for the ministry. Let your hands not be weak. Let your hands not, uh, your, your, your shoulder not, not drop. The Lord is strong and mighty. And the Lord will do beyond our expectations. I want to pray for you. If there are challenges in your life and ministry that has held you down for years, I pray for you. Lord, as the swans cry for mercy this afternoon, let your hand be strong upon them. Let there be deliverance. Let there be recovery. Let there be restoration. Let there be visitation to every pastor, every watchman, every intercessor, every church leader. Lord, I ask that this afternoon let your hand be strong. Lord, it is in your will and in your word to bring us into restoration. Lord, let that restoration begin now. I command that restoration for Jacob. I command that restoration for Israel. I command that restoration into the territory. Let Owere hear my voice. Let him state hear my voice. Let the hand of restoration be strong. And Lord, may we find the grace from you to begin to engage in your instructions and be fruitful. We look up to you, Holy Ghost, to strengthen us and to help us. We cannot do it by ourselves. We trust you for grace. Do it and take all the praise. Preserve and cover ministers. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Thank you for joining the broadcast. I want to assure you that understanding the territory will continue, but we will also have a field of mentorship that we are going to raise, some aspect of mentorship that we're going to be looking into. The Lord bless you mightily in the name of Jesus. Have a great week. Jesus loves you. This is Reverend Sorochi saying thank you once again. God bless you and God's grace in Jesus' name. Amen.